we want to either use 12 inches over one foot or one foot over 12 inches. Okay, so lots of fraction work involved here, which I know is stressful for most of us. So um, kind of just got to hang in there. Um, it's going to be the same concept with the three feet equals one yard. You're going to use either three feet over one yard or you're going to use one yard over three feet. So there's a little bit of an explanation down below. I'll let you read it, but it's just a fancy way to multiply by one. Okay, um, kind of like if you had a fraction. Um, if you have like one over seven, I'm mathematically allowed to multiply that by three over three because I'm allowed to multiply by one. Okay, three over three is one. So that's the same as three over 21. Three over 21 is the same decimal as one over seven. So it's kind of all interrelated in that way. Um, but again, this purple and blue up here is pretty important. That's essentially what we're going to do to convert between different measurements. So um, if I have 17 feet to start, I'm probably going to use the fact that 12 inches is equal to one foot. Okay. But the hard part comes into play of what do I do? What goes on bottom? What goes on top? Since this is 17 feet over one, Okay, that feet is on top. That means I need my inches on top and my feet in the bottom because I'm going to need these feet to cancel each other out. Okay, so the way I would set it up for this one is 12 inches for every one foot. Okay, so you kind of want to track the units because they really help you like set up the fractions where things go. So your feet cancel out and you're just left with 17 times 12. Um, to give you a number that's probably big, um, 204 inches. Okay. So um, again, that's called dimensional analysis, and that's what we're using right there. Now, the American metric system is pretty difficult to work with. Um, I don't know why I said metric system. The American standard system is not necessarily easy to work with here. I would have these like separated, in my opinion, as you want to kind of deal with five feet, and then you want to separately deal with seven inches. Okay. So when it asks how tall is he in inches, I've already got seven inches accounted for, so I'm just going to leave this alone. Okay. But with the five feet, I need to know that five feet, what that is in inches which that comes from five feet over one. I'm going to have my foot in the denominator again, no pun intended. Um, and then my 12 inches on top, because again, that feet and the feet need to cancel out. So that gives me that five feet is 60 inches. Therefore, my friend is 67 inches tall in total from the seven inches and the 60 inches together. Hopefully that's making a little bit of sense right there. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can go about number three. Um, I don't recommend this way of 79 inches and multiplying it to be um, this time you could do feet on top. Again, I don't necessarily recommend this. That one foot is every 12 inches. The inches are on top, inches are on bottom, so they cancel. So um, you would be left with, I totally, I'm messing something up right there. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> what I just did there. Oh, yeah, 79 divided by 12. Yeah, I was like, I do not want to multiply this, but I guess I wasn't wrong. Um, 79 divided by 12. That gives you 6.583 feet, okay? But that 0.583, I mean, you could work with it, but it's going to get you just a nasty decimal. Um, so there's not necessarily an easy way to do this. Um, what I would personally do is... If I know that six feet are within 
79 inches, I would try to figure out how many feet, how many inches are in six feet. Again, this is not necessarily the best or quickest way to do it. But if you multiply those together, you get 72 inches. So what that leaves me with is the fact that I have only seven more inches to get me to 79. So when it asks me how tall am I in, in feet and inches, it would be six feet and seven inches. So again, there's not necessarily a quick when you're going from like inches to inches and feet, um, that's kind of one of the main downfalls of our American system there. <laughs> so um, that won't come up a lot. A lot of times it just goes, um, it's a little bit more straightforward than that. So um, from here, we've got that Mount Everest is 29,035 feet. And we just want to convert that to miles. Um, Again, it's nice that it's not 29,035 feet in two inches, or else it would be annoying, like number three. So from here, um, if you're using the feet and miles conversion, which again is up here, you want to have your feet in the denominator. Okay. So one mile is 5,280 feet. I'm going to have my one mile on top. And then this is technically over one, but that's not super important. Your feet will cancel. So the way you figure this out is you will just do 29,035 feet divided by 500, 5,280 feet to get 5.5 miles. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll, I'll pause the video after this next one. So from JFK to LaGuardia, um, you have 11 miles. And as you know, from your little chart up here, it doesn't just go from miles to inches. So this is like true dimensional analysis is when you really got to mess with like a bunch of different ones. Um, and that's where you would convert you kind of have to go through like a, this gauntlet of conversions. So you want miles in the bottom. So one mile is 5,280 feet. But again, we want inches. And so I would have to multiply by another fraction of one foot and um, 12 inches. So again, were intentional. I didn't just like write this purple that way because I felt like it. I wrote it because feet was on top, so I needed feet in the bottom, um, and I needed inches on top in the very end. So as you can see, hopefully the miles and miles cancel, the feet and feet cancel. So what I have to do is I have to just multiply across 11 times 5,280 times 12 to get that is 69,000. 690 inches. So to show our work, are we expected to show that fraction? Because I mean, like in my own head, I guess